I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe it was because he's also Jewish, but I, I don't know why I launched into a Jerry Seinfeld impersonation <laughs> there. But maybe it's the festivist spirit in me. I don't know. <laughs> He's saying that Jesus probably sounded like Jerry Seinfeld. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> anyway. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. No, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. That's right, we have the annual Dose of Stupid, the Daily Dose of Stupid Award, so what we're going to do is we're going to be counting down the top five stupidest stories of the year, followed by our announcement of who is the stupidest person of the year. So the way that that works is we'll give you the five stories that we thought were the stupidest, and then we will give you the person who was featured in the Daily Dose of Stupid more than any others. And we're going to go ahead and, and count down the top five for the Daily Dose of Stupid. But before we do that, let's go ahead and give our honorable mentions. Honorable mention. Dad, did you have one that didn't make the top five that you thought was especially stupid? Yeah, this one was especially stupid. The, since baseball is near and dear to my heart. Of course. The tomahawk chop being racist and the whole things surrounding that all the the pomp circumstance with making that into something that's actually important for one thing right and taking up time effort and energy of people and making it into something that it's really not and that's what bugs me about it is is how is that racist when it's got all the with the support from a lot of the native american people that would be if anyone was offended it would be them and it's not them. Right. The local Cherokee tribe does yeah. work with the Braves. So it's, that's what bugged me about it. It's just so utterly stupid. And then on top of that, the wrong people care about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, Laura, I don't think your I don't no. think your mic's on. It's not. Well, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I, I agree, Dad. And one of the things that was annoying about it is, of course, the guy that prompted the whole thing that was holding the sign there in Houston during game one, or that would have been game three, I think. Or no, it was, it was game one. Uh, the guy that was holding the chop is racist sign, old white guy. Yeah. It's always the white people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, old white liberals, for some reason, just get off on telling minorities what they're supposed to be offended by. Sure. White liberal, liberal women, especially. Yeah. For some reason. I don't know what, well, this one was a man, but here's another thing. Probably rich, because if you had tickets to the World Series, That's probably a rich point. guy. We talked about that earlier. Right. The cheapest one were 800 bucks a pop. Yeah. yeah. And the thing that bugs me about it is, if you actually know the history, you know it was Native Americans that introduced that to the Braves. Sure. Yeah. Because one of their players, Deion Sanders, yeah. who used to be at FSU, was the one that introduced it. Yeah. And so it was a Native American's idea to do it. And it was Native Americans that started it because when you hear the chop at Truist Park, that is a recording of the FSU marching band playing that. And so it's people that are connected with the Seminole tribe. Right. And so it's just crazy that the Native Americans are not only perfectly fine with it, they're proud of it and like it. And it's the white people that are like, no, you should be offended by that. That's racist. <laughs> Shouldn't we be like all about representing minorities? In which case, do a tomahawk chop. Absolutely. So, Laura, what did you have for your honorable mention? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite stories of the year is Ibram X. Kendi coming out <laughs> yeah. and being a complete idiot, post, like tweeted something that just tore apart his entire life's work. So he tweets out that uh, about all these white students that are lying on their college applications saying that they're minorities to be able to get in. Right. So if we had white privilege, why would they need to do that? Good point. That's a good point. But see, Laura, you would know that because, of course, my Christmas gift to you was the white privilege card. Uh, so yeah. you've got that now. You can that that gives you license to white splain. You know that, right? Yes, I'd like to white splain to you guys <laughs> why you should be offended. All right, there you go. Uh, but yeah, no, that was that was one of my favorites too. In fact, I considered putting it in my top five because it's just so dumb that he tweeted it out. The, the, the thing that was stupid about it is not that the story existed. It's that he tweeted it out thinking it supported his worldview when in, in actuality it torpedoes it. Because it's all about how being white is a huge advantage over minorities and you have all this white privilege means you get whatever you want. 
And then it turns out that the white kids are like, no, actually, it's a disadvantage to be white. We'd like to be considered minorities when we're yeah, trying to get into colleges. Right. Anyway. I've heard of some really, like, some white people, 4.3 GPA, it still can't get into some colleges because they're white. Yeah. I, it's it's true. And uh, kind of in conjunction with that, I remember that Lauren Chen tweeted out in response to that that uh, they were looking at, I think it was Harvard's admissions, and they grouped white people and Asians together to make it look like the minorities were really disadvantaged. But if you count the Asians, it actually <laughs> makes it look not as bad. Uh, Asians, you know, they just, they ruin the curve for everybody. Asians ruin everyone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's actually go into, oh, wait, I forgot my honorable mention. Mine was Roy Johnson. So it's a local story. He writes for AL.com. I remember that he worded it in his actual story that he wrote for AL.com when we were talking about whether or not there would be a mask mandate on students for schools in Alabama. He said, sending your child, and he was talking about elementary age kids, sending your child to school without a mask is like throwing them into traffic. Do you know how many children in the state of Alabama under the age of 14 have died from COVID-19? How many? None. So Literally not a single one. Basically, COVID-19 has killed less people than Alec Baldwin in Alabama. <laughs> well, right. under the age of 14, yes. Yeah. Uh, but sure, that's the same as throwing your child into traffic, sending them in without a mask, which doesn't even necessarily guarantee that they get the virus, which has, hasn't killed anybody. But there you go. It has my child coughs. Yeah. <laughs> I, it really is basically its own separate religion at this point. So let's go ahead and do the top five. All right, so number five this year is that there were there was a leftist author out of the UK who tweeted this out, and I'll go ahead and, and read the tweet. There we go. This is Flora Gill. Someone needs to create porn for children. Hear me out. Young teens are already watching porn, but they're finding hardcore aggressive videos that give a terrible view of sex. They need entry-level porn, a softcore site where everyone asks for consent and no one gets choked, etc. So, yeah, apparently that was the big problem that we had is that it's not – the porn itself is not the problem. It's just that kids are watching really hardcore porn, and what we need is porn for kids. Yeah, it's kind of like let's introduce them to light drugs to start with when they're five. Right, we don't want, we don't want kids to start on heroin, so let's just you know give them a pack of Marlboros at age five or six. Yeah. That'll work out real good. Jesus, stay away from my kid. Showing up. <laughs> Right. Meteor outside. It was just absolutely ridiculous, though, the idea that, well, it's just that they're not watching the right kind of porn. No, all porn's bad. No exceptions. I, I make no apologies for that statement. Kids shouldn't be watching it. Adults shouldn't be watching it. But kids especially shouldn't be watching it. Mm -hmm. Number four. Number four this year was CNN's Chris Cuomo, who is saying that white kids need to die for change to take place. So we'll go ahead and watch that clip now. And you know what the answer is? You really do. You don't like it. I don't like it. it. Scares me. Shootings, gun laws, access to weapons. Oh, you! I know when they'll change. Your kids start getting killed. White people's kids start getting killed. Smoking that doobie that's actually legal probably in your state now, but they don't know what it was. And then the kid runs and the pop, 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 pop. Cop was justified. Why'd you run? Oh, he had a baseball game tonight. Huh? White kid, oh, big family, that house over there. Those start piling up. What is going on with these police? Oh, what? Maybe we shouldn't even have police. That kind of mania, that kind of madness, that'll be you. That'll be the majority, because it's your people. See, now, black people start getting all guns, forming militias, protect themselves. Can't trust deep state. Hoo -hoo. You'll see a wave of change in access and accountability. We saw it in the 60s. That's when it changes, because that's when it's you. Yeah, so a lot of wisdom and truth bombs coming from Chris Cuomo there, saying that, well, if we just had some white kids to get shot by police, then we'd start rolling back these ridiculous laws that, you know, we have a constitutional right for. And uh, then we'd start seeing some police reform. Um, the problem is... 
Chris Cuomo kind of fell victim to his own ivory tower because if you look at the statistics, twice as many white teenagers were killed last year as opposed to the black teenagers. Now, granted, there's a difference in proportionality of population, but the point is, he's like, oh, well, white kids never get killed yeah. by police officers when it's unjustified. No, that happens too. It's rare, but it's also rare for black people. It is. And don't you feel sorry for Cuomo? Is, is he collecting dimes now? I mean, is he going to unemployment? Last I, I heard, he and his brother are trying to run a subway in Brooklyn. Oh. <laughs> No, they can, which is great because now they can sell sandwiches to Jesse Smollett. There you go. <laughs> and he will hold on to that sandwich for dear life, even while being <laughs> threatened for you, his life. You can throw bleach on me, but you will not harm my Subway. See, Subway really is missing out on a golden opportunity there. They, he see, he should be their next Jared. <laughs> yes. It's like even even when I was being attacked and thought I was going to die because of a hate crime, I would not let go of my Subway sandwich. <laughs> Eat fresh, even when you're being attacked. Right. <laughs> but yeah, Chris Cuomo there. And I, I love, I think probably the best part of that is at the end where he's like, oh, well, what if, you know, what will change is a whole bunch of black people start getting guns. I, I don't have a problem mm. with black people getting guns. I've helped a black guy pick out a gun once, actually. Mm. Like, not, not a problem for me. I'm not going to say, oh, maybe we should have some gun restrictions now that there's a lot of black guys with guns. I don't no, know. The whole thing's stupid. <laughs> Constitution guarantees your right to guns no matter what your color is. Yeah, let's do it. Let's give them more guns. Maybe they'll have less black on black violence. Yeah. Right. There's there's a copy of the Constitution hanging up there behind your head there, Laura. I don't remember it saying in there, uh, shall not be infringed unless it's a black dude. No, I I've studied the Constitution pretty thoroughly and I don't remember seeing that. Well, there you go. Anyway. Uh, I will say before we move on, it is nice that the last year's stupidest person of the year award recipient is making an appearance again this year because Chris Cuomo, of course, won that last year. So let's go ahead and move on to number three. Number three. All right. So number three on the list, AOC says that she's a planned parenthood baby. You, you got to love AOC. She always winds up in the top five somehow. So here she is. First and foremost, I don't want to hear a single person on this committee or outside of this committee talk about what about uh, valuing life when they continue to uphold the death penalty, when they continue to support policies that disproportionately incarcerate and lead to the deaths of black men and people throughout this country, and uphold in a an absolutely unjust medical system that exists for profit that allows people to die because they can't afford to live. In addition to that, if we want to talk about Planned Parenthood, let's talk about how many lives Planned Parenthood has saved and how many babies have been born because of the prenatal care provided by Planned Parenthood. And if you don't, if you don't believe it, and if you've never met a Planned Parenthood baby, I'm happy to let you know that I am one and that my mother received and relied on prenatal care from Planned Parenthood when she was pregnant with me. Now, I especially love this one because we happen to have a mom here in studio with us who's actually playing with little James right now off in the corner. Answer a question for me, Laura. Did you ever visit a Planned Parenthood while you were pregnant? Not at all. Did you ever get any kind of pre prenatal vitamins or anything from Planned Parenthood? No. Yet somehow James is still here. I think he's here because I didn't go to Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Well, yeah. exactly. And it's so ridiculous. She's like, well, babies can't be born without Planned Parenthood. I'm like, no, I don't think that's the way that it works. No, and pretty, in fact, pretty sure, it wasn't there. Right. I'm pretty sure AOC would have been born regardless of where her mom got prenatal vitamins. I, I don't know if she realizes this, but babies were being born for a very long time before Planned Parenthood existed. Or before you had prenatal vitamins. Well, that too. Uh, but <laughs> just her calling herself a... a Planned Parenthood baby, I, I think pretty much anybody that's alive is, by definition, not a Planned Parenthood baby. That's true. But anyway. Uh, I, I gotta say, on this one, I just think it's ridiculous that she's trying to draw this false dichotomy and trying to say that if it weren't for Planned Parenthood, there wouldn't be all these babies being born or whatever. I, um, I don't know of any pro-life person that has a problem with Planned Parenthood giving out prenatal vitamins. In fact, no. if that is all they were doing, I 
still wouldn't want them to receive federal funding just because I'm a libertarian. I don't think anybody should do that. But I wouldn't have a problem with Planned Parenthood. In fact, I might even donate to them if that were the case. Yeah, there's plenty of like pregnancy crisis centers that do that. I mean, you, you don't have to be a Planned Parenthood for that, man. No, the problem is the abortions. That's the thing we have an issue with. We just Which don't is, like people dying. Yeah, right. the, the biggest part of their income. Right. Far. Oh, yeah. It's not even close. And that's why they do it. That's why they exist. And they're going to continue to as long as the law upholds it. Well, and that's the thing, too. One statement that she made in there that was so ridiculous is she was saying, well, you're not allowed to say anything about the issue of life unless you're like going to go against the death penalty and agree with basically all the other things that I agree with and go for universal health care. And see, the funny thing is, I actually have a friend in Tennessee. His name's John DeBerry. He was the minority leader for the state of Tennessee, lifelong Democrat, been serving in the state house for 25 years. He was for all of the things that she talked about, universal uh, basic income, medication, all of that. You know what he was against? Yeah. Abortion. I do. I remember. You know what they did? Kicked him out of the party and would yeah. not fund his campaign. Oh, yeah. Because that's a litmus test. Right. So she's pretending like, well, if you just agreed with all this stuff, then we could have a discussion about abortion. But then when someone actually shows up that holds exactly all those beliefs, except for the abortion, she's like, oh, I don't want to listen to you. It's, it. it's just a bluff. We're, we're pro all the ends that she's trying to be a better, a better life. Um, we just think that part of that is not killing you before you come out of the womb. And the other side of that too is by creating a capitalistic system whereby you can actually succeed. Right. Let's just take the capitalism and, and free market solutions out of it for just one second for the sake of argument. How many aborted babies get free Medicare? Uh, hmm. They don't make it, do they? Exactly zero. How many of them get a universal basic income? None. None. How many of them get free college? None. None at all. So if we're wanting to talk about those things, if those things are a moral good, as she's saying, wouldn't more people get them if there were less people that were aborted? You would think. Anyway. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two. All right, and number two on the list, Senator Raphael Warnock of the great state of Georgia says that we don't need Jesus, I kid you not, because we can save ourselves. This was his tweet that he sent out on that one. So I'll go ahead and read it here. The meaning of Easter is more transcendent than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whether you are a Christian or not, through a commitment to helping others, we are able to save ourselves. Now, I know that when Jay Leno used to do things like this, his go-to thing to say to start out with, I'm no theologian. I can't actually say that because I am a theologian. I'm in, I'm in the master's program. But I don't think you have to have a doctorate in biblical studies to know that that's not how Christianity works. No. You, you don't save yourself. Yeah. That's kind of one of the core tenets of the religion. Am I am I correct on that, Dad? It he is. actually has a master's degree it, in Bible. It is a core tenet of, of it, and that was why Jesus came to the world to save his people from their sins. Right. Uh, first and, Bible verse you ever taught me. Right. Just the first one. And uh, that's one of those principles, but uh, you have to minimize the importance of Jesus yeah. on this side. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the first thing you have to do is make him into a fable, make him into a cartoon character, make him into something other than what he actually was. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to do that to undermine all of these other things. Yeah, you almost make him into a cartoon. You do. It, he, it's a fantasy thing. He, he's almost like, and I hate to do this because you know how much I love Superman, but he's almost like Superman to where you can just continually revamp him and update him when it, whenever there's a, a new theology that comes down from the woke left and we can just remodel jesus to fit whatever that new thing is that he's almost like an empty vessel that we can fill with whatever we want yeah much like the preacher character you do right like uh, <laughs> gregory <laughs> post but it, honestly you could if i had a gregory post twitter account which i have not done but i've thought about doing several times you would not be able to tell that that was from uh from raphael warnock who's supposed to be a minister by the way, and not a parody from the Babylon Bee or Gregory Post or some other satire site. Yeah. Well, I personally don't have an opinion on this, both because my husband's not here and because all my women's Bible studies just teach me that Jesus loves me because I have, even though I have a messy house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't know. And now the show's come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Laura. <laughs> Actually, I hate that Matt's not here with us because I know that this is one that he ranked as his number one. And he and I both ranked this one as number one. And so I was like, me and Matt together. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was so ridiculous because somebody that's supposed to be a preacher missed like one of the very first primordial teachings of Christianity that you don't save yourself. That there would be no reason for Jesus to come if you could save yourself. Anyway. So true. Yeah, I think that Jesus would be like, you think I wanted to die on a cross if you could already save yourself? That was really, really painful. Yeah. Anyway. It doesn't seem worth it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe it was because he's also Jewish, but I, I don't know why I launched into a Jerry Seinfeld impersonation <laughs> there, but maybe it's the festivus spirit in me. I don't know. <laughs> Are you saying that Jesus probably sounded like Jerry Seinfeld? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> anyway. And number one. All right, and number one on the list. You know what? I'm not even going to intro it. I'm just going to let you listen to it. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. I'll never forget hearing that the first time. And I said to myself, they're trying to make God into a woman. Uh, that this whole idea of trying to to have a sex with God yeah. and to try to make him more human, I guess, is part of the, the reason why this is done too, and to try to make him mm -hmm. more feminine. And, and I suppose that's the genesis of where this comes from. I, I, I don't know. It's but again, all over again. <laughs> the, what, what's funny is both of our top two daily doses of stupid this year were a preacher that's supposed to know the Bible. And this guy apparently doesn't even know what the word amen means. Like, he doesn't realize that the it, it's not men as in the gender. No. It's just amen, which is a word that means it is so. Of course. Uh, already knew that, but... That requires brain cells. Yeah, and it go, but it goes back to, we've got to feminize it. I, I guess. Uh, is the, the, but we the, feminized, the way I took it. We feminized religion so much lately. Yeah. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, this guy just, like, took it to a whole other level when he did it, but yeah. He's just a product of what was made, which is a feminized Christianity all around. Okay, so quick question. When his breath is bad and, and needs a little help, does he get woman toast? Uh, <laughs> I mean, are we just going to put woe in front of every time the letters M-E-N happen to appear together in a word that has nothing to do point, with gender? Yeah. Like, it's, it's just stupid. A woman hole instead of a man hole? I don't think you want to talk about that. <laughs> I might have to edit that out. That's right. <laughs> you well, stepped I in it, Dad. About the thing I, I know what you were he talking came out about. Of one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Getting Caleb, he was yeah. C-section. <laughs> <laughs> we're providing so much editing. <laughs> yeah. Caleb's like, I'd stay up all night to edit this crap. <laughs> <laughs> We broke Caleb. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you did that. I just kind of helped set it up. <laughs> I'm the queen of making it awkward. <laughs> I have no idea where to go from here. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> Laura finally figured out a way to get me to stop talking. Yes! It's a Festivus miracle. <laughs> it is a Festivus miracle. Happy Festivus. <laughs> One eternity later. <laughs> High five, James. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's only been two times in my entire broadcasting career where I just lost it like that. So that was the second one. <laughs> All right. Happy Festivus. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> Seriously, though. It, it, I really do think it comes from this idea of we have to we have to gen, gender neutralize everything and and defend. Here's the thing: God doesn't have a sex. He, he because sex is a physical thing. Yeah. He doesn't have a physical body. Now, when he did have a physical body and manifest himself in the form of Jesus Christ, he was a male. But the character of God is neither male nor female. However, in His Word, He most often uses male lingo and line, and. Uh, uh, pronoun. I was going to say symbolism yeah. to represent yeah. himself, and I do think we should respect that. Sure. 
but the idea that everything must be both male and female and they're it's just ridiculous and that was of course yeah. misapplied right and in that case it's a word man, that doesn't man, even man, have a gender yeah it's but, just meaning truly not but that's the thing the they're so desperate to make everything pc right and actually the worst part of the prayer was all the stuff that came before it, it was not yeah. the actual not ending that. of it that was of just course. kind of the thing that stuck out the most yeah, James getting just a little bit fussy there, but don't worry, we are going to keep going. James is going to go take a nap, and uh, bye, Laura, thank you so much for being on the episode, and happy Festivus to you and to all. And Dad and I are going to stick around, and we are about to announce the stupidest person of the year. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! And now it is time for that glorious time of year where we do the stupidest person of the year. The way that we tabulate this is whoever has made the most appearances in A Daily Dose of Stupid wins the award. Now, as those of you who've been watching the show know, this year I had to scale back the show quite a bit, only did one show a week, and because of that, frankly, it was a lot harder to tabulate this just because there's fewer Daily Doses of Stupid, which meant there were fewer votes. What wound up happening is there was a three-way tie. Three people that tied for the award with three appearances each. Jen Psaki. Joseph Robinette Biden, and Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. However, as a tiebreaker, the way that I decided who was going to be the stupidest person of the year was I decided the best way to handle it is, well, Jen Psaki is the spokesperson for Joe Biden, and so in a roundabout way, it's kind of like her incidents of saying something stupid are at least adjacent to his. And so... By that effect, I just went ahead and named Joe Biden stupidest person of the year. So for the first time in the history of the show, a sitting president has been named stupidest person of the year. Congratulations, Joseph Robinette Biden. So that makes sense to me based on your criteria. Sure. But I don't think anybody on the planet can outdo AOC. Yeah. I will say out of, you'll notice that none of Joe Biden's stories made the top five. Yeah. But one of AOC's did and another one came in sixth place. So she yeah. came close to having two on the top yeah, five. Yeah, which... Uh, but this is a measurement of quantity, yeah. not quality. I've got you. I I agree that AOC's incidents of stupid are more fantabulous. Yeah. As she would say than uh Joe Biden's, but Joe Biden had quite a few dumb moments of You see, year. you know we were talking about this earlier. I don't think that's fair to the president. You don't? No, I don't because it's obvious the man has some challenges that he really can't help. I know he's in the White House, I know he's the president, I know he's the most powerful person on the planet as you weigh people out. Right. But still, he's challenged. And when you're challenged like that, do you really, you know, we don't blame children for things that they're not, <laughs> we don't blame them for things that they're not aware of and are not able to, they don't have the maturity or the intellect to be able to be in control of themselves because of their immaturity, because of their, their brain development. Well, now I will point but this we out know though. With, but Biden's the same way in many instances. You could certainly make that argument. I, I don't disagree with you. However, I will point this out, and I think that this is the reason that it's fair to award him the Daily Dose of Stupid Award. It's because the things that I marked him down as saying is stupid were things that were not because of his mental decline. Okay. Because it would be one thing if we were just pointing out gaffes, like him calling Satchel Page the, and I promise, I'm just quoting the president here, YouTube, don't ban me. He referred to him as the Great Negro. Yes. Like, that wasn't a daily dose of stupid because that's just a slip of the tongue. That's not actually something that was dumb. Now, him saying that black people are not smart enough to hire a lawyer yeah. to defend themselves, that's a stupid thing. That's yeah. not just like a mental lapse. And so uh, I understand what you're saying, but if you look at the three incidents and also Jen Psaki's three incidents that we bring up, that's not really something you can just chalk up to him, you know, being in a mental fog where the only thing that he can concentrate on for more than 20 seconds is a cup of pudding. Yeah. I, so I do think it's actually so fair to him this time. So you're giving partial credit to him for Peppermint Patty. 
See, I don't like the fact that we're calling Jen Saki Peppermint Patty because I actually like Peppermint Patty. Yeah, I do too. Actually, she was hilarious. I mean, she is kind of a butch lesbian, but she's a likable character. Yeah, she is. Her and Sir. Yeah. You know, she and Marcy are definitely a lesbian Mar- couple. Marcy, That's... <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, what's sad is back then, we didn't even think of it that way. It wasn't even... That's just a character that Schultz made up. That, yeah, and that's the thing. They are, they weren't. I'm obviously just making a joke there. Sure. But I will say, I do get annoyed since we're talking about stupid things anyway. You and I were actually talking about this before lunch. Yes. That now it's gotten to the point to where everything has to be gay. Like Captain America. Well, he's good friends with Bucky. That must mean that they're a gay couple. No, they're not. They're just best friends. Yeah. They, he was a soldier in the 40s. Do you think that was going on back then? Well, a lot less, that's for sure, because it had not become a fad. Yeah, well, definitely not with two dudes in the military that were no, in, that's, that's in the foxholes. That's looked not down thing. upon at that point. Right. Yeah, that kind of thing. But Plus, he's slept with like a lot of women. So I yeah, don't, that's, <laughs> I have, that's true. Too. I have evidence of the contrary on that one. But back to the president. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's programmed with what he's supposed to say. They protect him very, very well. Mm. Imagine what it would be like if they turned him loose and just let him say whatever he wanted to say. I actually really wish they would do that. Not yeah. just because it would be political gold for the Republicans, but primarily just because the it's sheer entertainment value. Well, they've never hidden a, a presidential candidate like he was hidden. And that's part of the protective process for the president because they are so afraid that he's going to say something. That is one of the reasons that I have said to people over and over again, and I know that they mean well by it, but Trump supporters, they use this argument all the time, and it's a dumb argument. They're like, oh, it's not possible that Joe Biden legitimately won the presidency because, you know, Trump would draw 20,000 people in a cornfield where Joe Biden would have six random people that didn't even realize that an event was going on show up to his. Now, that is true. But the thing is, they were specifically trying to hide Joe Biden, and so they didn't invite big crowds to those things. Yeah. Now, they did it under the guise of COVID restrictions, and they wanted to be COVID safe. But really, what they were trying to do was the same strategy KIV uses, which is don't talk to any voters before Election Day. Yeah, just be as quiet as possible. Let us run the commercials, and we'll we'll dictate uh, the message. Right. And and. You, you'll win if you don't make many mistakes. Yeah, perfect example of that. Joe Biden was saying that it was just a junk report and fake news that they were going to give $400,000 to illegal immigrants for family separations. And he told the journalists that, no, you're just making that up. And then later, like three hours later, Joe Biden's staff comes out like, no, the president's fine with that. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you can tell the guy's being handled. Yeah, he is being handled. He, he can't it. process new information. Like, he, he still thinks of himself as being the guy that he was probably 15, 20 years ago, because that's the last time he remembers anything. Yeah. And so because of that, when someone says something that 1995 or 2005 Joe Biden wouldn't have supported, he thinks that that's still his position. When he doesn't realize his staff is actually the one setting the policy. Yeah. If you ever get any opportunity about the president, one of the best things that has been done on him is an impersonation by Rich Little. If you ever get the opportunity to see that, it's absolutely hilarious. He's one of the greatest of all times. And he captures Joe Biden very, very well in some very uh, easy way. It's not voice. It's the way he reacts and the way he moves around and everything. Come on, he's man. got him on. Yeah, he's got him uh, spot on, I think. Well, you know, I'm a little bit of an person, not not to his level, but I, I do some impersonations myself. Have I shown you my Joe Biden before? No, you haven't. All right, here we go. Watch it. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's my Joe yeah. Biden. Yeah, right. but he's better that way. <laughs> See, I don't have a problem with him going to sleep, taking a nap. I wish he would, you know, get started in the morning at 9, take a lunch, or an early lunch at 11, and take a two-hour nap at 2, and See, we're much better off. I, normally, I'd agree with you. And that was one of the reasons when Hannity would talk about Obama taking golfing trips like, Hannity, shut up, man. We, I want him on the golf course as much as possible. But with Joe Biden, because it's his staff running everything, I honestly don't know that that makes a difference. I think he's kind of doing the same stuff regardless of whether yeah. he's asleep or, or not. Because his staff is really the one doing everything. So Joe Biden, stupidest of the year? Stupidest of the year that it, for 2021. So th- this is the fifth year we have done this. He is now the fifth winner and the only sitting president to ever win this award. So congratulations, Joseph Robinette Biden. Yeah, pray for the president. (laughs) For sure. 
If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?